This is the first of a couple of videos I'm going to make about phase changes in water. Actually, I called it phase changes in water, but the same principles apply to anything that's, that uh, exists as matter that has a definite freezing point and boiling point, which is almost everything. But if it's water, then the temperature that we see represented on this graph is zero degrees C, and the temperature up here on this graph is 100 degrees C. So those two temperatures are famously known as freezing point and boiling point. I would like to tie this graph into the video that I previously showed you on the website. You'll remember that there was a pan with ice in it, and the ice at the beginning of the experiment was zero degrees C. So that means that the ice was here. Now when your ice is in your freezer, would it be above or below this line? Well, the temperature of the ice in your freezer would be below the line. While the water was boiling, the temperature was at 100. And the temperature doesn't go above 100 until all of the ice, or excuse me, all the water is boiled away. And we've collected the steam. Of course, in between 0 and 100, we're talking about liquid water. So it doesn't start to turn to a gas until it hits 100 degrees. So what this little video is about is the quantities or how we quantify the heat that's put into the process of heating water. I'm going to begin with the middle part of this graph. So this section right here. The quantity of heat that it takes to raise the temperature of something is really related to three different factors. The first is how much water you're actually going to be heating. So what's a normal unit that we use in chemistry to mean how much? It'd be mass. Mass is always measured in grams. The second uh, factor that I'm going to bring up, and I'll usually write this factor last in the equation, but I'm going to talk about it secondly because it's easier to understand, is the change in temperature. The change in temperature will be written in degrees C. That's Kelvin. And the change in temperature in this case for the section that I've outlined would be 100 degrees because you're starting at zero going to 100. Then the third factor that relates that is related to the quantity of heat that it takes to raise the temperature of something is something that we defined in that video as a specific heat capacity. And it's usually measured in either calories or joules per gram degree C. I'm going to start with calories because it's a term that you've heard of. So calories per gram degree C. All right, to shorten the formula, we'll represent mass as M. Usually you see the specific heat capacity written secondly, which would be CP. So once again, CP is a the symbol that we're going to use for specific heat capacity. And the third term is delta T. Delta is this triangle, it's a capital Greek letter, and it means change in science. So we're looking at the formula being Q is equal to M, CP, delta T. M stands for mass. CP stands for specific heat capacity. Delta T is in degrees C. You do not need to change the Kelvin in this unit because we'll always be talking about changes in temperature and the change on the scales of Celsius and Celsius are the same. 
because each degree, the difference, the span of one degree is the same whether you're talking about Kelvin or Celsius. And since we're looking at changes, you can say that, suppose you had 50 degrees um, Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius, so 50 minus 20 would be 30. If you had 50 degrees Celsius, that would be 323. And 20 degrees Celsius would be 293. So if you have 323 and 293, it would look like this. You'd have 323, uh, 293, or 50 and 20. So the difference here would be 0, 3, 30 degrees. Difference here, 30 degrees. So you see the difference is the same no matter which scale you're on since the degree increments are the same. So what is, I think you're familiar with grams means mass and delta T means change in temperature, degree C, we're familiar with those. This unit might be a little bit confusing. What this means is it takes one calorie to raise one gram, one degree. One calorie per gram degree. One calorie to raise one gram, one degree. That's for water. Now water has, happens to have a specific heat capacity of, of one calorie. So Cp of H2O equals one calorie per gram degree C. If it wasn't water, it might have a different specific heat capacity. But for water, that's what it is. And by the way, that's the definition of a calorie. That's the same kind of calories that we talk about in food, except that food calories are a thousand calories or a kilocalorie. So when we say one food calorie, like a a Milky Way bar might have 250 calories in it, or really it's 250,000 calories. So what is a calorie? It's simply a unit of heat energy. It's how much energy it takes to raise one gram of water by one degree C. One gram is about the size of an M&M, &M, so it doesn't take an awfully huge quantity of energy to raise that small amount by one degree. So this formula applies any place on this graph where there is a temperature change. So where does it apply? I'll label the graph region A, region B, region C, region D, and region E. So which of those regions involve a temperature change? A does, because you're going from here to here. You're changing on the y-axis. From this point to here point, this point, so from here to here, that would be a temperature change. That's region C. So this formula applies in region A, region C, and then the third place it applies is in region E. So then how do we represent the energy change in region B? If you think back to the video that I, that I showed you earlier uh, with the ice in the pan, when I began to heat it, the ice changed. Its, its temperature actually slowly went up in the demonstration I did, but in an ideal world, it just remains flat like this. So if you're not changing the temperature, you can't use this formula. The same thing was true in region D where it was boiling. The temperature wasn't changing, but was I putting energy in while it was sitting on the burner? Well, yeah, absolutely. But the temperature's not changing. So is it possible to put energy in without changing the temperature? Yes. So what's happening to that energy? Instead of being used to, to raise the temperature, it is being used to separate the molecules from each other or to break bonds between the molecules. You see temperature is related to how fast molecules are moving. Temperature is defined as kinetic energy or average kinetic energy which is equal to one half mass times velocity squared. So the faster molecules move the higher their temperature or the higher the temperature, the faster they move. Well, here the temperature is staying constant, so what are we using the energy to do? We're not changing the kinetic energy, we're changing potential energy by breaking bonds. And we're breaking bonds between the ice particles here, 
between the molecules in a liquid phase here as they go to gas. Notice it takes a lot more energy to make a liquid go to a gas than it does to make a solid go to a liquid. All right, so going back to the graph, this area of the graph is solid, this area of the graph is liquid, this area of the graph is gas, in this area, you've got a mix of liquid and gas. And in this area, you've got a mix of solid and liquid. All right, so how do we represent the energy change here? We use this formula. The quantity of heat is equal, again, to the mass multiplied by something we call the heat of fusion. And up here, we represent the energy change. The quantity of heat is equal to the mass multiplied by something called the heat of vaporization. So heat of fusion is defined as the energy needed to melt one gram of something. at its melting point. Up here, same definition, energy needed instead of melting, we're going to say vaporize, which means change to a gas, one gram of something at its boiling point. All right, so we have three formulas that I've developed in this little video. The first formula represents energy change anytime that temperature is changing, and that's this area, and it applied in region A and region C and region E. When you're melting, you're not changing temperature, but we're still putting energy in. The energy that's being put in is called the heat of fusion, and we quantify the energy needed to melt something by using this formula. The third formula was similar to the heat of fusion formula, except it uses something called heat of vaporization. It's the energy required to vaporize one gram of something at its boiling point. So three formulas. The first formula for changing temperature, the heat of fusion formula for melting, and the heat of vaporization, vaporization formula for uh, boiling. What's coming is calculations using these formulas. So if I wanted to calculate how much energy it took to go from here up to here, I would have to calculate the energy change from here to here, and then across, and then up, and then over, and then up. So there would be five steps in a problem like that. If we just wanted to go somewhere in here, it'd just be three steps. So uh, you, you would find the energy changes and then add them together to get the overall energy change. So I'm going to stop this video and I'll make another in which I give you examples using math and we'll do some quantitative stuff with this. But this is the basic uh, instruction regarding the formulas.